Today is exactly one month since returning to Nigeria from Saudi Arabia with my three children and sincerely there are a few things I regret not preparing for and there were a few things as a Nigerian who just barely left. It, it's not up to two years. We left Nigeria the last week of November 2022. So this year, this November coming, we will make it exactly two years living Nigeria and fam, it just feels like it's been 10, 15, 20 years that I left. A lot of changes, a lot of cultural shocks inside my own culture that I will be discussing and sharing with you guys today. For those of you who are thinking of Japa dying, am I walking into a shrine? Anyway, <laughs> if you're getting this video before I post subsequent videos, most of you should know exactly where I am and what I'm doing here. But if you do not know, check the comment section below. Just look, look behind me. Are those things not scary? Are they not looking like shrines? I know that they are scarecrows, maybe to scare away birds or whatsoever, but um, there is a red one there, so yeah, I'm getting scared. This is my first time alone here. The last time I came here, it was with my husband. Okay, let me say, I'm inside village. I'm inside village, there's no need to be doing a suspense or whatsoever. I'm inside the village and I'm in Aguluzibo, specifically. Aguluzibo, Anambra State. As you can see, the freshness, the village vibes, nothing, nothing in this life beats this nature. Nothing on earth beats this feeling, beats this freshness. You're not hearing car noises, all of that. Just the trees dancing, the leaves, just... Yeah, animals. Anyway, before I even continue this video, before I share with you, like, guys, I don't know where I'm going, but let's walk like we always walk. And yeah, I decided not to blur the background so you guys can also get a feel of, you know, this whole nature, the whole nature thing. I think I'm walking into someone's compound. But yeah, this video is proudly sponsored by Lemfi. If you're hearing of Lemfi for the first time, I think I need to sit this one out and just give you guys the gist. I hope they won't have bush in here. I hope there's no antio because the kind of mosquitoes that have been biting me in this village. I don't know if they are serious mosquitoes. I feel like it's enough to give me three pluses of malaria. But um, thank God for AS. Thank God I'm AS. AS gang. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I'm AS, so we're a bit more resistant to malaria. I barely, I barely fall sick. But anyway, this particular video is sponsored by Lemfi. If you're hearing Lemfi for the first time, Lemfi is an international payment app that allows you to transfer money. If you're living in the UK, you're living in US, you're living in Canada, wherever you are in the abroad, and you want to send down money to me who is here in Nigeria. I mean, I just jacked my dad. A lot of things I'm going to be discussing in this video. <laughs> it may sound like it's a joke or it's not true, but it's true. So at this point, we need money inside Nigeria. If you have relatives, they need money. If you have people who you feel like they are struggling or business is not going well, they are not lying to you. They need money. So if you live in the US, UK, Canada, use Lemfi to send down money to Nigeria. Be cool. I know the inflation problem we have is not just here in Africa or West Africa. I know inflation is global. But still, if you want to get more for your money, Lemfi is the app to use because they will give you the best exchange rate as well as zero transfer fees. So if you don't have Lemfi, go to www.lemfi.com or if you have an Android or an Apple phone, you can visit your Google Play Store or your App Store and download the Lemfi app. So if you're trying to transfer $100 and above and you live in the US, UK, Canada, my dear, get $30 back by using my code DINA. Just use my code, that referral code you see on the screen, D-Y-N-A. Use it if you're making any transfer of $100 and above and you get $30 back. Is that not a good deal? Am I not bringing you a bonge something? Lemfi is simple, is reliable, is quick. Within minutes, the person that you're sending it to, Pagan, will get a lot. It will be credited. This one no be okay. Wait tomorrow. Uh, have you seen it? Please go to the bank and go and queue. Mm -mm. We've gone past that. This one, pam, 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 pam. It's simple. The app is simple to navigate. Once you send, the person gets it within 
minute. Use the Lenfi app today to transfer money to your friends, your family, your relatives, to me, to Mama Dinah. I'm not allergic to getting money into my account, okay? All the links will be in the description area below. Check it out. Check out the link to download the app, to get my referral code. Every single thing will be in the description area below. Thank you so much for using Lemfi. Anyway, can we continue our journey? Because I don't even know where we're going. I just said, let me stop and give you this uh, plug before you people say, ah, Mama died and since we came back, no plug, no not. I'd always bring you people surest plug and you know that. Anyway, the first thing that I regret, I don't want to call it a regret. I don't regret anything yet. I'm still in my, I just got back era. <laughs> Siri, I don't ask you a question. We are threading a dangerous area. This place is very quiet. Let me show you guys my path. I'm just going to turn my camera. But yeah, I'm just taking a walk. My husband's place isn't far from here. I just decided to take a walk. This is the first time I'm actually doing this since being married. It's been how many years? It's been this year, it's five years going to six years of getting married. And I'm in that era where, I mean, I feel like we're done at this point with kids. We're in the raising kids era. So definitely we want to start inculcating in the children, you know, values, culture, all of that. And when is the best time to do it? This is when to catch them. So um, yeah, as much as I'm being immersed into the community, knowing what's up and trying to be involved as Onyemba, as someone who came from outside, not outside per se, but I'm an Imo State girl married into Anambra, so Kanya Roman, <laughs> for me to know what's up, for me to know, you know, the slight differences in, you know, within our Igbo culture, because there will, there will be ways that Imo people do their things and Anambra do their things as well. Although similar, it could vary depending on, you know, the state, the village and all of that. So in order to get accustomed to you know my husband's people now my my place i wouldn't be saying my husband now my place i need to join different things be part of things it's just the conscious effort i've been making since getting married and it's been working out well it wouldn't happen overnight but i feel like over the years um it will pay off it would pay off if not for me or my children for my future daughter-in-laws and all of that but anyway, guys, I hope I remember where I'm coming from. So I just walked through here. Anyway, today is August meeting. I'm meant to be going for August meeting this morning. My mom-in-law has gone already. But I just decided to just share village life with you guys because <laughs> since we came here, my dear, every day, every single day, we go from morning till evening. We leave by 8 a.m. We come back almost 6. So there is no village. Like, I haven't had time to do any touring, sightseeing, knowing what's up and all of that. I know that's not why we came, but still, at least, yeah. And we'll be leaving next tomorrow. And there is meeting every single day until that next tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, like I was saying, one of the major things I wasn't prepared for is the hyperinflation in Nigeria. I know they don't want to call it for what it is. It is actually hyperinflation because for me, the minimum wage here in Nigeria is 30,000 Naira. And the prices of food, the prices of housing, transportation, just, just about everything. Everything. That 30,000 cannot even sustain you for days, talk more of weeks or months. It just, it, it, it just doesn't like it cannot sustain you at all it just doesn't make any sense because one bag of rice is seventy thousand, and then minimum wage is thirty thousand. we're not talking of transport so here in nigeria there are people who are earning minimum wage of thirty thousand naira, and there are even people who are earning less than that so how are they able to afford food transport no matter how you budget no matter how you cut things down no matter what it is that you think you want to do to you know just feel like you want to live within your means or below your means or whatsoever to get by it's almost impossible that's why i'm calling it for what it is hyperinflation there good morning that's why i'm calling it what it is hyperinflation 
so at this point i wasn't prepared i know i've been hearing oh nigeria things are so expensive i or would i say me and my family we went from upper middle class to low income i don't know what you you may describe as low income but i don't think with what i'm seeing so far and the spending i'm doing so far i'm classified or we are classified as middle income earners in nigeria anymore and i'm saying the gospel truth before we left we could afford to buy and stock up food for a whole month we could afford to buy gallons of fuel for a whole month we could afford to do all of that and still have the money to flex if we wanted to and still have the money to do whatsoever that was maybe miscellaneous stuff that just came out of the blue but right now i'm struggling to stock up my house i'm struggling i'm seriously struggling like i cannot buy at a go unless i just want to buy and then know that i'm not going out the whole month i cannot buy at a go a bag of rice bags of beans bags of gari tomatoes like we used to do before we left it's like it's not even sustainable now we just have to buy like half bag of rice maybe half bag of beans half bag of gari like if it's not food if it's not transport if it's not basic things there is no money i find myself getting angry when okay when we came back our engine our generator engine knocked i don't know like before these were things that if they call price we'll negotiate negotiate and then bam, 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 we had to stay almost two three days because i i thought the guy that was working with us was probably cheating us i had to call three different people and they told us to fix that engine thing was almost fifty thousand naira it was mad it was crazy and even paying for that i was like we cannot afford to have something spoil in this house. I just get a bit frustrated these days if I hear that, oh, something has spoiled, this thing has spoiled, or this one has broken down. Or Like, I cannot afford for anything to spoil. So please, let's maintain what we can maintain. Like before, almost, I did not come back with any clothes. Though. I did not, like, I just got stuff for people, got basic stuff for my children. I packed my children's clothes and we came back. But fam, I didn't, I didn't, I was like, okay, that one won't be hard now. If I enter my one, I'll go and buy clothes. My dear, when did I even start buying clothes? I started buying clothes before we came for this August meeting. This is three weeks after. Because I'll touch one thing, they are calling prices for me. So, we are experiencing hyperinflation, but people or the government, would I say, they don't want to call it for what it is because it's highly unsustainable the way we're living and getting by. Like, if you were upper middle class before, I'm telling you that right now, even if you're doing business, whatever you're doing, you just have to find a way to cut down because things are crazily expensive. Also, another thing that I didn't prepare myself for moving back to Nigeria was, you know, the cultural shift that happened with the cost of living. Now, before, people could walk to your house, you know, you could go to anybody's house, like, you could be easily welcomed and entertained. But with this whole inflation thing, I mean, it's becoming crazy. It's like <laughs> people are beginning to live like Westerners. Like before you go to someone's house, you need to announce family or friend or acquaintance. You cannot just wake up and stroll to someone's house unless you're carrying food or drinks or something to go to that person's house. You just have to be prepared with something. Just, you, you just can't wake up and just walk to somebody's house, especially with your children. Just go there and sit and, and be expecting, unless you're not expecting anything, or you're going to go and give. People no longer just wake up and go to people's houses anymore, at least where I live. I don't know if every other place or every other family, they don't really care, they no sense like that. Here in Port Harcourt, you just don't just do that. In fact, it's even insensitive to just wake up and go to somebody's house. Like, it's considered inconsiderate because with the way things are, pure water is how much? Bottle water is how much? One bottle of drink, malt, all those things, everything has skyrocketed. Mommy, good morning, you know. Everything has skyrocketed. So you just have to be considerate. You can't just be thinking, okay, if I wake up, I'll carry my children. All these uh, abnormal visits. I've seen that cultural shift. And then when I came back, I expected that a lot more people would be angrier, a lot more people would be frustrated because of the way the economy is. I mean, down east and in Port Harcourt, 
what I've noticed is a sense of empathy. I mean, obviously, if you go to market and start doing unnecessary bargain, <laughs> nobody will send you. They'll ask you, are you in this Nigeria? Before we left, that was when, you know, things, the prices of things slowly started going up. So when I left, people, people used to flare up. Any little thing used to flare people up. Like, I noticed any little thing used to flare people up. You go to the market, you're in, the, you're in a public transport, or you're even in public. People just get triggered easily. But these days, I find that people are more empathic. It's like the suffering has united people together. It's like the suffering has made people like, ah, ne, de, please. Like, people are more empathic. People are more empathic. People are more, I don't know where I'm going. I need to walk back. <laughs> people are more empathic. People are more, would I say, considerate. People are more, like, people don't, I don't know the English to use. People sympathize with the way things are. People like try to help. People like, there is this like communal feeling since I came back. Whether the person is related to me or not, I've realized that anywhere I am, people are willing to help. People are willing to explain to you that, oh, look, oh, this is the price of this thing. It hasn't been easy, blah, blah, blah. Business is not moving. Like, and it's like it has spread to everyone around. So you don't find people unnecessarily angry or frustrated. It's that like people have moved on from the whole situation. If you come to Nigeria, it doesn't even feel like I expected people to be a lot more angry. The situation in Nigeria is that people are coping with the whole thing. It's like it's a, a spirit of we've given up and we're just riding along with it. I know this wouldn't last or it may not last. I don't want to say it wouldn't. It may not last. Something may end up abruptly happening in future like when the protest happened you know some youth they fled up and yeah north south everywhere people were burning down things and stuff don't get me wrong yeah that could happen but the general sense or the general atmosphere of people since i came back is more sympathetic more empathic more you know, communal than I expected. The last but not the least shock I got was a price tag for everything. I know also that has accelerated due to the economy and things, but fam, there are helps that you ask. Any type of help where you they get, any type of help you feel like people want to render to you, ask, oh, is this help monetized or is it free? Because someone can finish helping you the next minute, chore them something. Which I know is like normal. It's the culture here. Like if someone helps you, you need to tip. But um, there is a tip where you go give. Even the side eye you will get, you will regret tipping. Now, you cannot tip 500 and be thinking, okay, the person will be happy with that 500 you tipped. Depending on the type of help the person rendered, of course. But yeah, people now have, I would say people have monetized being good Samaritans. Like, it's now a business, <laughs> especially I noticed this at the airport. I know that one has been since time immemorial, but it was so bad this time. Like, every little thing, even to help me carry my bag from here to here, and to find me something. It, like, it was crazy. The only place I didn't experience that was in Kano. In Kano, people did things professionally. I mean, Kano Airport, when we landed, the international airport. People were doing things professionally, like nobody was like, <clears throat> nobody was asking for anything. Immediately I entered Lagos, it was a different ball game altogether. In Port Harcourt, because of what I experienced in Lagos, I said I'll carry my things myself, I don't need help. Even outside here, people have learned to monetize help. Anything they do for you, there is a price tag to it. So you just have to be careful of you know, people helping you or people offering to help you. You just have to ask, <laughs> is this help monetized? If it's monetized, what do you think is suitable? If you can do things yourself, I would say do it. Do not come and start <laughs> saying, okay, I need this, I need this. You know, before I left, I had this expectation like, I mean, YouTube pays in dollars. I earn in dollars. My husband sends reals, even the one year long distance that we had before he came to pick us up to join him in Saudi. Money used to go a long way. We used to have savings. We used to be able to invest in stuff. But now, fam, the situation is critical. 
the situation is critical. The S I, I had a high expectation of coming back and probably balling out for the first week. I was humbled the first week. Just going into the market and buying my children's uh, summer camp school bag, water bottle, all of that. I did house. I entered house for almost one week. Like, you cannot, you just have to be pressing calculator for everything you do. Or you wake up one morning and say, how did all my money disappear? How did I have 100,000, 200,000, 500,000? And then within one week, it's done. And at this point, I would say that if you're a family of five, one million naira, 500,000 naira is not enough. And I know that there will be people who will be arguing in the comment section, oh, how much are you spending? One million naira, 500,000. I am telling you that if you are in that middle class area, or you live in a middle class area, or you've been having a middle class life before you left Nigeria, or you know, yeah, that was the expectation. Or maybe you were a lower income earner and you moved abroad, you got your dollars, pounds, and you say you want to come back and probably upgrade to upper class or middle class life. Fam, you need at least 3M a month and above in a decent place, not even in, in a higher class GRA area to be able to live with your kids and your family. To so just live a basic life, send your kids to an average school, you know, provide basic provision, not doing too much for you and your family. I'm telling you that 500,000, 1 million naira currently is a joke for a month. It's something that you need to think about. It's something that you need to consider when you're Japa dying. No matter how much you want to cut costs, unless you want to live like low income, uh -huh. that would be perfect. If you want to live a low income lifestyle, perfect. But <laughs> if you want to get that upper middle class, upper echelon class lifestyle with 1 million naira, 500,000 naira, it's a joke for a family of four, five, six. It's a joke. If it's just you, probably it could work. But if it's you and kids, it's, it's a joke at this point in Nigeria. These are some of the things I wanted to share with you guys um, before I subsequently start dropping, you know, detailed video on the cost of food, how much we spend in a month, how much rent is in Port Harcourt. I have detailed videos for those of you who are looking to Japada, just like me back to Nigeria, um, the cost of things generally down south, it could differ, you know, in Lagos, in Abuja, in Kano, Kaduna, um, in certain areas in the east. Like when I came to Aba and I entered the market, things were crazily cheaper than in Port Harcourt. Like the pepe I bought for 1,000 naira is like our 2,000 naira pepe in, uh, in Port Harcourt. So it could vary, the prices of things could vary. So the amount I'm giving you and the things I'm sharing with you is for a middle class or lower middle class Enna in Port Harcourt. So before we left Nigeria, I feel like we were in that upper middle class um, zone when it comes to what we could afford, when it comes to things we could do, when it comes to places we could go, when it comes to the school our kids were going to, upper middle class. Right now, I think we've dropped to lower middle class or probably low income. If I'm in low income, I don't even know how people who are earning less than us are surviving. Because at this point, I'm trying to do the math and it's not even matching. Um, the math is not matching at all. So these are the things you need to think about. Put a pen down. Plan your life. Plan your life before you come back. Don't think that, oh, that remote job will sustain you and your family. Inflation that is hitting in Nigeria is hitting hard because you don't have credit, you don't have no help from the government for anything. Everything you're hustling for is for, from your own pocket, from your own pocket for yourself. Everything is from your own pocket and for, for yourself. So, yeah, I just wanted to share this update with you guys. Anyway, if you absolutely enjoyed this um, walk and talk video and you'd love more, amazing sceneries like this share with me in the comment section below what do you think is your regret about japa dying are you thinking of japa dying what are your plans um how do you think you could survive living in nigeria what places would you love to live if you're thinking about moving back to nigeria what city are you thinking of moving to and if you're already back to nigeria what regrets do you have and what advice do you have to give to those who are thinking of japa dying let's get the comments rolling down there um give this video a massive thumbs up subscribe down below and hopefully i am going to see you guys in my next video
Good morning. It's already up. Okay. Me when I go near Nina. Nala. Okay, I'll give you the. Okay. Mana, how many years ago they take each other? Fifteen years. So he caught off now after fifteen years before, too. Hey. Oh, wow. <laughs> 